What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Ham Radio Crash Course. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's Friday. What is today? August 2nd. Man, very good. So that makes this the patron picks episode. I sent out a poll to the $10 patrons. Actually, all the patrons picked this one. And today they picked to build the Raspberry Pi Whisper Transmitter from QRP, guys. So very good. I'm glad. This is a cool one. Uh, this is a, a an easy kit to get started with. So I'll just say that right up front. So yeah, appreciate everybody rolling in. We'll wait to get things kicked off. What's up? It is indeed Friday. How's it going? <laughs> Very good. Well, thanks again, everybody, for tuning in. We'll get turned right over here because we got a lot to talk about. And, of course, I've left my phone uh, not on on silent. So, what's up again, everybody? How you doing? This is the Ham Radio Crash Course. Every Friday, we try to stream around 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Try to cover all kinds of different topics in amateur radio to give you kind of a taste, a starting point in which you can then... Figure out if it's for you, if you want to dive into it. Because uh, amateur radio can be expensive. There's lots of inexpensive ways to go. But it can be expensive because there's so much. So we try and cover a little bit of it so you can check it out. And if it's something you're into, then you can you can try it. Give it a shot. So we do have uh, a little bit of news to get started through here. So we're going to dive right into that. A lot of cool little shout-outs, fun little stories that happen. just want to say big uh, shout-out to the community in general, the Ham Radio Crash Course, but then the larger ham community in general. This came to me from Steve. Um, so he, he's in Australia, and this was from Peter, VU3YE. Uh, Steve's got hit, a uh, lightning strike, and took out his transmitter. And this individual, Peter, basically sent him a bid X and got him back up and running. So just wanted to say that's very cool. That's very nice that we have a community that's as cool as it is uh, to just people they don't really know, right? Just little stories you hear. There's lots of stories of people getting donated a radio, an amateur radio, either to get them started or to get them back up and running, which uh, that's awesome. So, um I just really like that. So VU3YE, kudos to you. That's awesome. Very much appreciate that. Got a lot of people in the chat. Right on. Kalamazoo. <laughs> we got Kalamazoo in the house. Got a people, a couple of people from Modern Rogue or saw the Modern Rogue episode. Yeah, that was a fun one. There is one more planned, I believe, and that one's going to be centered around HF. That one should be interesting. I can't wait to see what they did with it because there's a lot of, lot of footage on that one. All right. So second story here, um, I and this will dive right into me opening the beer. I got a care package from Brian Noskowitz, and uh, he's one of the, the patrons that gets mentioned at the end of the show. Brian sent me a really nice little care package of a product. So he told me, hey, I'm sending you something to take a look at, and I'll be posting a video on it soon. But along with it, uh, he sent some beer, which is the beer I'll be drinking, which is this super, super cool double dry hopped uh, Hamburg Juice Box IPA, which is vanilla. This is a vanilla lactose mango tangerine and passion f uh, fruit purees. This thing is awesome. Uh, I don't ever see this where I'm from, so make sure that uh, you you check them out. Anyway, I'm very I, I i drank all the other ones i saved this one to drink it on the stream uh he also sent a patch for his unit oh boy i'll show you on the overhead patch from his unit and a signal corpse challenge coin i love getting challenge coins so that was very very nice of him so those will ride shotgun while we do the build here um i'm gonna go ahead and open this hopefully ah oh good yeah Spray beer right over the electronics. The sensitive electronic components. Cheers to everybody. Very good. Ah, man. It's real juicy, like pulpy, like almost drinking a cup of juice with full pulp in it, which is awesome. So we have another giveaway, and that's going on right now. So all you need to do is take the link in the description, or maybe one of the mods will post the link to our Discord. Discord is just an IRC chat room. It happens to be what we use for our after stream chats. We are giving away 
a custom built, an Ethan custom, as I'm calling it, a uh, hotspot, which will allow you to do DMR, Yesu System Fusion, P25, or DMR to P, uh, Yesu System Fusion back and forth, and D Star. So basically, if you live in an area uh, that doesn't have any digital repeaters and you yourself have a digital radio, then with this, you'll be able to communicate. Now, sure, it uses the internet, but you got to get RF all the way through that chain. And you're going to learn a little bit about a Raspberry Pi when you play around with that. So that's very cool. Big shout out to Ethan. I believe I have his URL in the chat. If I don't, I'll post it on the giveaway so you can check it out. He's actually building these custom jobs with these cool acrylic cases. And so if you're interested in that, um, in fact, Ethan, I think you can just go in the giveaway. And if you post the link, that would be great. Or someone can. Um, that would be awesome. But all you got to do is click the little party horn, which um, I can't show you with my mouse right now. But basically, if you see where it says giveaway, and then underneath it, it's a little red party horn that says, I believe, 79. Just click that, and it'll go up by one, and that's your number. We're giving it away live next week on the stream. So make sure you get in before that time. And hopefully you join us on Discord, which is another great aspect of our community on the Ham Radio Crash Course. Very, very helpful people. Very active um, for as far as Discord, as far as I know Discord to be. I'm only in a couple of them, including Modern Rogues Discord, and, and it's it's very good. So always appreciate that. To go along with this, this whole hotspot thing, Ethan bought himself an HRI 200, which is the Yesu device that will turn your radio into kind of a mini repeater. So he's now running our wires x room he's got a computer devoted to it to just be able to run the hrcc wires x room so we really appreciate that ethan thanks all around for for doing what you're doing that's that's super awesome and very generous to give away a uh, hotspot, which i think is very cool okay so next week next week when we give away the hotspot, i'm likely going to have a special guest and uh, i confirmed with him a couple of days ago and i got a double background because the topic he and i have been talking about this topic for a while it is uh i don't want to call it a radio brand but it is a company in which sells radios and we are going to have a lively discussion on that so bob k6uda will be on the live stream next week and it should be a lot of fun now, what else do we got? Uh, Quirky QRP, got to throw the shout out to Quirky QRP again. They are doing a $5 discount if you want to purchase anything off of his website on uh, Etsy. The link is in the description. $5 off on any of your orders. So that's awesome. Um, that's also super generous, super cool. Not affiliated with them at all. He just said, hey, let's do this. And I said, absolutely. And let's see, two more things, and then we're, we're moving on. We've got a... <laughs> a ham radio wedding coming up and i will be there to live stream it this is the oh wow my computer's going all wonky i don't need to see that oh that's why it's a chat room anyway km6 prc and km6 pra live ham radio wedding at hro i will be live at 9 a.m august 17th from the anaheim hro store and it is open to the public so if anyone's in the area and they want to check this out make sure to come by because they're getting married and it should be a very ham radio centric wedding from what i'm told there won't be a pa there will be uh people ha holding hts and we're gonna do some fun stuff with morse code uh, and lots of other interesting surprises so make sure you check that out and yeah that's gonna be that's gonna be super fun so appreciate it if you guys we're at least watching the stream. I think this is going to be kind of historic. So that should be pretty cool. Now, lastly, I will be going to the beach tomorrow, <laughs> but um, I'm taking all my radios along with me. I'm going to be there for most of the day. So I will be set up and I will be operating and I'm working on some antenna reviews and some other fun stuff. So make sure if you hear me or follow me on the Facebook page because I may be making a call out to, uh, to get some people on the air and maybe get you in the video. So very very cool k8 mrd radio stuff the ham radio crash course of marriage <laughs> yeah i don't know if anybody wants my advice on marriage <laughs> but i will be there to live stream it so <laughs> at least in the beginning right oh man can't say enough good stuff about that so yeah hamburg juice box boy double dry drop uh, double dry hopped ipa very very good okay so what are we doing well let's go back to the web here we are building the QRP Guys Easy Whisper Raspberry Pi module. It's $20. This one comes on the 20 meters band. My understanding is that this is a public domain circuit from HA7DCD. 
Zoltan, and it basically connects to the um, I.O. pins on the top of the Raspberry Pi. You're basically making a hat. Now, this is a very easy to kit with one, or very easy kit to build with one caveat. There are a lot of toroids. In fact, is there a picture? There's a picture. There's six toroids that you have to wind. The good news is, is that all these toroids are, I believe, less than 14 turns. That's the most that you have to do, which I did last night. Yes, spoiler alert, I did the toroids last night, and I have one to install. I'll show you what that looks like when we get to that point. But um, not that many components, pretty easy to do, so why don't we just dive right into that now, and I'll warm up the iron. Okay, so what we're looking at is I kind of pre-laid out parts. I don't normally have this level of uh, pre-work that goes into my streams. But basically, all our components are laid out based off of when you will solder these on the kit going from left to right. And this is the board as it sits right now with the toroids in. I did have some missing pieces that came in the kit that we'll talk about when we get to it. But the instructions, which are back over here. Nope, that's a different shot which are right here, very easy to follow uh, with pictures. And what I love when they do this, they have color like highlights on where your component should be. Mike Mur Murison, thank you very much. Appreciate that. KC9YFH. That's awesome. Thank you very much. So it makes it easy to install. You get these nice little pictures. And here's what it looks like fully assembled. And they put this kind of more on the green side, which is easy and I, I would qualify it as easy surface mount parts being um, the hardest I would probably agree with that too parts list is pretty straightforward so let's dive in the first things we're gonna do well the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate this camera around a little bit I did get a mic stand and I need to move it so that I can sit right over the top of this and also slide this over a bit so I did it cheers Mic stand hopefully is improving the quality of the audio. Also, I bought a fan that is both insanely strong when I need it to be and also really quiet, but it moves a lot of air. So the Vornado company, big, big fan. Let's go back over here. Okay, so we'll get to that when we get to it. Let me set it over here for now. All right, so starting over here, we're going to install um, DC1, DC1, DC2, and DC, oh, I've got it, whoop, <laughs> is that right? Yeah, DC1, DC2, and DC3, which is right there. Now, the downside of doing it the way I did it, and I don't recommend you do it the way I did it, installing the toroids first. That is not what I would do, um, because toroids are pretty big. But let me just say this right now. If you ever want to get into live streaming electronic component installations, I do not recommend that you wind toroids on the air because it's not fun. <laughs> not fun at all. Really, the problem with winding toroids is um, you got to keep a count, which is not hard to do when you're just keeping track of how many turns you put in. But you've got to also... Um, keep your live stream interesting and soldering components is pretty boring stuff as it is so I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of dry fit most of these the kids are screaming in the background for some reason and that's gonna make me very upset <laughs> hopefully Leia is hearing them making such a ruckus and do something about it but I don't think she is Okay, so those are the first components laid in. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put in the other capacitors while we're doing it, just so that um, I can solder a lot of stuff at once. Because there is a bit of going over on the Raspberry Pi side. Let's just check I've got everything. Something I noticed with these guys, the, um, the parts components are incredibly small. And so I ended up taking my phone... So I could read a couple of them. 224s. Yep. So we're right in the ballpark there. Okay. Now let's go to the next one. Okay. 
Okay. And one more. That guy. I've been working on computers all week. And then I come home and I look at tiny little electronic components. And boy howdy. It will hurt your eyes a bit. Yeah, the uh, having the toroids in here is making this more difficult, but not fun to wind toroids live. Having done it before and sitting in this heat, I think I would turn into a sweaty mess, like I was defusing a bomb or something. All right, let's uh, let's solder, shall we? You see that? Oh, you know what? I don't know if this is going to be a better view. We'll see. No, it's not. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> All right, hold on. Let's see if my getting my hand in here will get it back into focus. What's going on with this iron? Was that just my hand? Yeah. Uh, for camera, I'm using a bunch of Logitech webcams that just can't seem to pull focus, man. What's going on? Let's go ahead and straighten that out very quickly. Sorry for the slowdown here. I was using the fine tip, uh, fine tip on this uh, soldering iron yesterday when I was doing the toroids, and I swapped it out for the regular because man, the fine tip is good for when you need it, but uh, most components you need something large enough to really transfer that heat, and if you don't have it. If you're not using something. Um, like a standard tip. Uh, allocated brain. No flux. The flux is already in the solder. And I'm not doing a surface mount or anything. That's where I would likely use flux. Or if I was desoldering, I would use flux. So now I'm just snipping. I like to save these as for any of you who have watched my videos before on live builds. I save these pieces because I use them in uh, bridging leads if you're ever doing like a breadboard build or anything like that, and you want to bridge components together, big fan of using these guys to do it. So hang on to them if you don't have... Oh! The kids got so loud, my wife is taking them and leaving. Can't be too upset about that. I'll talk to you later, guys. You're going to have fun at the beach tomorrow. Okay. So first couple of solders here. Pretty easy. Pretty straightforward. Yeah. Okay, what's next? So looking at the whole side, I'm orienting everything off of the hole here. Uh, we're going to go from C1, C3, which are the two capacitors marked 39. Those are a big 39, which makes things real easy. I just had a little panic attack. I'm like, wait a second, I'm missing a toroid. And that's because I said I was going to install this one last so I could show you what I do. Somebody's calling me on the phone right now. I won't be answering yet. 
Has anybody been getting a lot of calls from the NRA lately? <laughs> I know I have. Okay, you know what? Let's throw a couple more components in here just so we get this done a little bit faster because we do have to fool around with uh, some Raspberry Pi action after this. So I want to make sure we get to that and actually transmit some whisper. Assuming this thing starts up. I mean, that's half of watching these. Half of the fun of watching these, right, is to see if this thing actually goes on, which, you know, it might not. I know I've had those before. In fact, I, I've got, where is that transmitter? I've got it on the bench. I've got to get back to looking at it. i got to sort this one out. Let's see. Okay, and this is a twofer, so I'm going to put this down for a second. So these guys are bundled together. I'm just going to rip them out. They just slide right out like that. Now what I'm doing, for those that haven't really soldered components before, is I'm kind of splaying out the back. I'm sliding the components through and then pulling them pulling them straight somebody say they see my uh, NYC police department patch somebody sent me that and I don't know if they're watching actually we're gonna go this way one good thing about this uh, vise is that you can kind of just nip it because these plastic pieces are real nice against the PCBs, so you won't mar them up. Ah, oh, that's nice. Oop. The new fan, added bonus, really pushing away the solder smoke. Solder smoke is not good for you, so that's an added bonus. Uh, no lead feet, fr no lead bender? No lead bender, huh? Missed one. Okay, so I did something a little dumb here, and I'll, I'll walk through what I did. But I can pretty quickly fix it. Actually, I don't know that's a problem yet. But uh, these leave kind of crossed, and it's a little close to the solder joint. Yeah, it will cut right off. So these are just uh, what you call side cutters. Side cutters are diagonal. Or I'm sorry, they're right angle cutters. And so when you put them up against the circuit board, you get a real flush cut. I know we got some new folks here, so I'm going to cover a little bit of the start of, of how you begin soldering. Now, as I go, I like to look kind of at the board, at my solders, come in here and snip them a little bit. Don't take them too far down, but don't make them too proud. You don't want them sticking out too far. And you're really looking for cold joints or anything like that that would appear um, misshapen. You don't want to have something too bulbous. You don't want to have something that's too... Um, that looks like it hasn't really seeded into the board. You want to like have the heat pull the solder into the PCB, the hole of the PCB where the component is. And that gives you a good solid connection. Okay, so we're moving right along here. All right, another one. His buddy, what is this guy? 681. You can follow along with me if you'd like to on the instructions. They are on the uh, QRP website, QRP Guys website. OK. 
second. Got another guy pulling through. I like to give a tug on the lead so that when you solder it up, it'll hold it tight. The solder will really get in there and take care of business. So. Now we're going to 331. Which way are these guys oriented? Oh, that's easy. Okay. Gonna solder these guys up. Oh, the link in the description is broken for the QRP guys kit? Oh, I'm sorry about that. Oh, solder bridge. So a solder bridge is where you, you accidentally bridge two um, components, two holes together, if you will. Um, likely through applying too much solder or doing it in a way that your hands kind of shake and put them together. The easiest way to break a solder bridge is just go in between them and wipe down, wipe it away. And then you'll likely have to come back, dip it into your uh, cleaning pot. And I'll show you my cleaning pot really quick. This is what I use to clean the solder off um, when I'm working. And all this is is just like an ashtray with a scouring pad uh, plugged into it and I just dab and what that does is my iron crooked oh the heat has actually bowed the iron well, that's not good no wonder this is acting kind of weird yeah look this whole thing's <laughs> okay the last of Radio Shack's fine irons I'm going to cut this out of the way real quick because we may have a bridge. I'm going to have to inspect this one for a second. This is actually supposed to be connected. Yep, we're good. We're almost there, believe it or not. And they say we're a little more than halfway as far as component, um, the component soldering is. And then we're going to have to go back in and install things like the... Oh, I missed a super chat. Sorry about that. Eugene M. Passed my tech exam last week and got my call sign yesterday. Very, very good. Cheers to, uh, cheers to you, Eugene. Cheers. Appreciate that. Mm. Good stuff. All right. Okay, R2. Oh, it's resistor time. So resistors, um, the good thing about these instructions is that they cover what color it should be. In this case, brown, red, red, gold. So starting here, brown, red, red, gold. And the way it wants these done is a vertical installation. So let me show you how you do a vertical real quick. The easiest way to do that is get a pair of your needle nose pliers, straighten out the resistor, and then just kind of clamp on the top, and then just take your finger and wrap it over. And you get this U-turn type effect. This U-turn 
is how you do a vertical resistor installation. It's pretty easy once you figure that out. And then they just go in. These uh, PCBs are printed, screen printed, with a fat circle on the bottom and a thin little hole on the top for the resistor. Now, my first foray into really doing vertical resistors, you'll find them a lot on components that they want to have real small, was the Pixie kit. The Pixie QRP kit is a vertical... Oh, did I just do that? I did. I did that wrong. Aha! <laughs> I put it in the wrong hole. So that's good. I looked. The next step, I jumped ahead. Got to be careful. That's why I screw up these live streams sometimes, is that I will... Uh, the adjacent components, similar, similar components. So again, this is brown, red, red, gold. Brown, red, red, gold on the rightmost side. And then next to it is brown, black, red, gold. Whew. Brown, black, red, gold. Same thing here. Just grab it on the top, fold it over like so. Now we got our little U-turn part. Uh, Firecracker says, are resistors universal or are they like diodes where they require correct current flow? They are universal. Okay. Now, the obvious goal here is to not have the components like touching or shorting against each other. So when you've got a lot of standing up resistors, um, I try to just solder those up um, with only a couple on the board and then I, I move my way around and I try um, to keep them straight or if I didn't have to pan for the camera I would hold them vertically up and down on the board to let gravity kind of pull them straight don't really have that luxury right now before I snip I'm going to check to see if they are good yeah, th that's good enough. That's that's fine. Okay. So there we go. Almost there. Okay, now we got the big guys, these big kahunas. These are also bi-directional, and they go into LC1 and LC2. These are also vertically aligned. John Gentzel, got it. Past tech exam, working on general, new call sign KJ7HXN. Thanks for the videos. Well, thank you for watching. I appreciate that. Um, same thing goes with this guy, although I choke up on it a little bit and just round it over like that. Okay, see? Pretty easy. There's no reason that you can't try a lot of this stuff for yourself. Um, I know people who go from not knowing how to solder into building up full radio QRP kits. I'm sure there's, <laughs> I'm sure there's less of them, but there are some. solder them up.
Look for bridging, no bridging. And again, what's bridging? Bridging is where you've got two components that the solder has kind of joined them together and you just wipe it clean like that. That was not a bridge, but uh, I just wanted to make sure. Pause for a sip. Mm. Congrats all you guys that just passed or who are upgrading. I agree, Mike Thies. Very good. Yep, Chris is on it, man. Uh, yeah, so we are using a 20-meter kit, which means you're going to need to be a general. Uh, they do have versions of this that um, you can run in other bands. I don't know that it's the QRP guys one, though. And I, I haven't looked into modifying it. So since we're here, um, I'm going to go ahead and solder in this last toroid. So I wound this toroid last night, and I want to I wanna mention something. The QRP guys kit is very generous with the wire. Ooh, Lee Harrell with the 762. I appreciate that. That's very nice. I quit drinking beer about 18 months ago. Been watching your live streams a few weeks ago now, and the beer fridge is again full of various stouts. Oh, well, geez. <laughs> I, I hope I wasn't the one that brought you back to drinking. I hope it wasn't for some reason other than you were just having a lark. Oh, well, I... I'll, I'll say thank you for the super chat, and I hope that it's okay that you're you're drinking again. <laughs> anyway, thank you. Um, so you just wind, and, and wrapping toroids is easy if you're not doing a live stream. You just put the wire through, and then you take the loose end, and you just start wrapping. And every pass through the inside of the hole is one turn. So you just count. So if you're looking at the side, you just count from one, two, three, and go all the way around until you count them all. Now, what the problem is with magnet wire is you're left with these leads, these little legs, right? Now, this wire is good wire, and it's it's green. Other wire is red. Underneath here, it's just an enamel covering of a red or green copper. I'm sorry. It's a red or green covering, an enamel of copper wire. And so what you generally have to do is scrape off the enamel. Now, that's a pain in the butt. However... Um, I've done it all kinds of different ways. I've attempted to burn it off. I've attempted to um, grind it off with small jeweler's files. The jeweler's files works actually pretty well, although I found a good mechanism to do it. And all you do is you take your side cutters and very lightly apply pressure and then just drag it off. And over time, the side you'll get a feel for how much pressure you can use, but over time, the, the side cutters will just start chipping the enamel off of it. In fact, I already did most of this one. Now, this tip, I had, I think I had heard mention, but the most recent mention of it was from um, the radio prepper, who's uh, Jill. He pronounces it Jill, or we'd say Gil in the United States, um, or Jill. I think it's Jill. I'm not French, obviously, and I apologize, Jill, if I'm saying your name incorrectly. But I'm a big fan of his, and uh, I was watching him build a kit, and he did it, and I was like, oh, I could try that. And it was great. It works great. So do that. Yeah, so um, O O E L Electrono Electrono. Sorry, I always say your name wrong. He says I have found that just soldering on it will burn the enamel off. It will. The problem is, is that you can. And ask me how I know. You can make these things actually break apart. These ferrites. If you apply enough heat to it, they will literally fall apart. So I vote to just scrape them off. Um, it's much easier than than trying to burn them off. Now, there is a, an exotic way of doing it and, and an expensive way of doing it. They actually sell solder wells that will keep the solder molten hot. And the solder wells work really good for it because you not only burn the enamel off in the molten solder, you also tin the, the leads themselves. So if you're doing a lot of these, a solder well or perhaps building a solder well on your own is a uh, wonderful thing you can do. So. These are easy to solder. You just touch, just like anything else, and roll. So, touch and roll. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. All right. All right, so now we're, we're down to, really, the final, the final couple components. Um, the last major component is transistor here, this guy, and it goes right here. Now, the transistors have three holes. You can see them. The light's poking through it. So what I do... Um, and I don't do anything special here. 
All I do is I take the transistor, sorry I bumped the camera, and I, I grab it in the middle. Some transistors are easier than others to do this with, by the way. Oh well, we'll just do it manually. Go in here and push it at push it out, push the middle one out, like that, so it kind of sticks out, the legs stick out. And then just come in with your needle nose and bend it straight. So then when you straighten all these guys out, you've got a perfect little three-legged trident. Let's get some light on it so you can see it. No, nope, that's not doing it. Now, I guess I have to get that old microscope back out, that USB microscope. Now that I've got a computer that's fast enough to, to really handle it, I'll do that the next time we do a build. I'll break out the microscope, and we can try that out. Um, also, so this is the part of the kit where they, uh, they miss something and I will, I'll show that now. What they missed was they did not uh, provide any pin headers. So these are pin headers. These are cuttable, just, uh, ways to connect jumpers. And this kit calls for one by three and then one by four. So I'm just going to take and count out three, one, two, three. Actually, let's count it from this side. One, two, three, and then snip. And then one, two, three, four, and snip. So that goes over there. These guys go here, like that, and like that. I should have done the other one. Yep. <laughs> so that's when you pull out your handy dandy needle nose pliers and that goes in just like that I should mention if you haven't already I'd appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up because we're gonna get to the Raspberry part pie part and hopefully that's gonna be a lot of fun to see that work in action uh, thumbs up would be great and if you haven't already please subscribe and remember we do a after chat on discord if you're not a member of our discord take the link in the description to the discord and join and I'll be doing live chat after voice chats big party room basically where we talk about different ham radio things okay okay so um, to get these soldered in see how they're kind of fiddly and wobbly well there's not a real good way of doing this um, I found uh, doing them doing two at a time is definitely not uh, a good way of doing this so I generally will kind of tilt it back up see this is going to be off camera let me let me see if I can do it with the uh, overhead. A little bit. We may just have to go off camera for this one. So I'll let it slack for a second. I'll go in here. Yeah, yeah. So what I did was I hit some solder on my tip, hit some solder on my tip, held it in place. And then kind of use my finger to hold the pin header up. So again, there's also kind of an over-the-hand twist method to doing this. Let's see if I can get this more in frame. There you go. So I'm going to kind of hold with my thumb like that with the solder kind of cattywampusy. Word of warning when you do it this way, it can get hot <laughs> on your finger. So you may not want to do that. You get used to it, though, in the sense that you don't get used to the burning of your flesh. You get used to doing it in a way that... Okay, so now, now you can just go back in. Oh, I was wondering what was going on here. We've got some leads we need to solder, cut off. Oh, my Discord link is down. Oh, that's not good. I don't know what's up with that. Yeah, use Zach's link. Sorry, guys. Use the chat link provided by Zach. Yep, oh, almost had a solder bridge.
How are we doing on time? Ooh, it's going faster than I thought. And let's go ahead and solder in the transistor. Good news is we're almost done here. I believe there's only two pieces left. Okay. So, let's see. Last pieces are this guy, which goes in the bottom. This is the GBIO port connector for the Raspberry Pi. It goes in the bottom because this sits on top of the Raspberry Pi. So I'm gonna do a bit of a backwards solder on this. Actually, I'm gonna hold it upright again like I did the other one. So apologies if you're gonna miss some of this. So all I do is that is I'm trying to get one pin um, soldered, and that's that's what I did there. And so now I just go back over. Ooh, that's a bit fiddly. Sorry, I gotta get up all on the camera on this one. This iron might be on its last legs. It's um it doesn't feel like it's the right temperature. So let me show you a quick uh view on that guy. So there's that GBIO pin installed. Pretty easy. So now antenna goes right on top here. I see we're missing something though. We seem to be missing something. Missing a couple of things. So we're going to have to go back over that. But let's do this first. And then we'll go back and check. I don't see any more components, and I was very careful. None fell out of the bag, so. Okay, I think Zach sorted it out. Good Discord link. All right, good. So make sure you join the Discord because that's how you get access to the giveaway for next week. Oh, I think somebody asked earlier, what beach am I going to tomorrow? Um, I will be at Bolsa Chica State Beach. Ooh, that's warm. Connectors can kind of be awkward. So a bit of a, what I do is I just circle them like that. That's not a good one. Like that. Let me snip that off. Connectors usually require a lot of heat, and they require a lot of solder. Okay. Okay, so we got two spots that are missing components right now. So I'm just going to do a quick look for a C8 and a C9 and see if we screwed something up.
Aha, C8 and C9 are for future bands. So let me show you what that is right there. So future bands. If you read the instructions in the beginning for the parts list, you might <laughs> know what that's for. John Fuller asks, ooh, there we go. John Fuller asks, has anyone else built and used this module? Will it work on a Raspberry Pi Zero? Uh, zero W. So I didn't think it would, but somebody says it can. Um, it was on the Facebook page. So maybe uh, your mileage will vary. I, I don't know. So here's my Raspberry Pi. Let's clear a little bit of space here for it. Okay. So I'm probably doing this wrong, but I believe, let me get this out of the way. I believe that you can just um, plug her right in. <laughs> I'll wait for somebody to scream no in the chat before I go do it. While I'm doing that, I'm going to go ahead and plug in the antenna jumper. Um, I do have a NFED antenna that I will be using. What is going on here? was kind of a janky head. Okay, so connected. Um, I'm gonna connect it to an antenna just in case it starts transmitting and there's nothing connected. That's a that's a big no-no. Uh, so I don't I don't want to mess with that. So I'm gonna leave that there. All right. So uh, I do have a website here that we can. I don't know if the GitHub has images. On... Oh no! You know what? We can go back to. Uh this image there we go okay so it's the last one on the GBIO that was the only thing I didn't really know so we will connect here okay I'll show you what I'm working with in a second oh why'd you do that What just happened to my video? There we go. All right. <laughs> like it just ignored me. All right, so now we have um, our hat connected to our Raspberry Pi. The next thing we have to do is connect to the Raspberry Pi. To do that, I have Hold on one second. Where'd it go? There it is. Okay, so now we're on uh, VNC. This is just a, a Raspberry Pi uh, that I VNC'd in, VNC into, which I'm using uh, real VNC. And I brought up a terminal and I have already installed the software. And, and let me do a quick thing on that so you know what that looks like, in fact. So off of the instructions for this guy, when you get down to the bottom here, after you've done your, your uh... oh, that's why they want that. Oh, interesting. There is something I didn't install, that little nut. Take care of that later. 
So at the bottom here, they have a link to the GitHub. And the GitHub is the software for running on the Raspberry Pi. Pretty simple if you're familiar with a little bit of Linux. It's just a download sudo apt-get to get um, to WSPRRY Pi. And you do a make and an install. At that point, running it, which we're going to try right now, is as simple as from the screen, you're going to use basically this is your arguments for the call. Simply put, if there's an example, when you scroll down here, you're going to say sudo whisper, you don't want test tone, sudo whisper, whisper, your call sign, then your locator, which I am in DM03, which is your uh, grid square. The whole world is basically broken up into these grids. There are websites you can go to to basically um, look at what your grid square is based off of your lat long or your zip code or your city of origin. I am DM03. And then you're going to say the DBs, uh, generally it's good to start at 10, and then the band of operation, the mode that you're in, or sorry, the band, which is in this case 20. All right, so. Let's see what happens. Let's just go for it. So, all right, I happen to have that laid out. Sudo WSPR KI6NAZ DM03 10 dB gain or 10 dB power, 20 meters. Go. All right, ready to transmit. Desired center frequency, waiting for whisper transmission on 140971 megahertz, waiting for next whis whisper transmission window. So I am going to, I don't think it's going to pick it up because I don't have an antenna connected to this. I'm just going to turn it on to 140971. And now we wait. And now we wait. Transmit started. I don't know that that's true. <laughs> Yeah, I like Don in there. Hey, that 20 words per minute's no problem. <laughs> Not anymore. You don't have to worry about that now. So we're going to wait for this to say it's done. It's usually a uh, two or three minute long process. I should turn my iron off too. Why don't we do that right now? Get this thing out of the way too so I don't end up burning myself. I've only burnt myself with a soldering iron like one time, and that's a lesson you've uh, you really don't forget. <laughs> so uh, how Whisper works is if you're familiar with FT8, you know how FT8 has like a 16 second window where there's a caller and then a responder and a caller and a responder. Whisper is just a transmit; it's a beacon um, mode, and it goes for about three minutes of just beaconing out information. And the reason why it's so long is. When you're working at such low power, deep down in the noise, the, the more repetition or the more data and the more times that you're putting it out. Okay, so it, it finished. So now, theoretically, um, I should be able to pull up Whisper. It usually takes a little bit of time. whispernet.org and I'm just going to pull this up see if I'm on there so there's all kinds of activity 
Do you own this website? Yes, I own this website. So we're going to go to 20 meters. Call is me. Update. Could it be that easy? I don't think so. Wah, wah. Okay, we'll leave that there for a second. Let me pull back up the BNC. So let's see. Um, let's do that again. Oop, wrong one. Make sure I've got all my connections. Well, that'll help if it's... It's a bit of warmth. Maybe get that off of the metal there that it was sitting on. Let's see how it goes. Let's, let's try again. Well, the power light goes interesting. So this is the power light, and it kind of fluxed. It went off and on for like a second, and then now we've got an activity light going. So I'm sure it's got some activity going, but I'm not picking anything up. And I think, I would like to think that I'd see something. Zero nine seven one. Oh, somebody says they see me listed. No, I don't think so. The website's not updating. We're also, uh, it is now dark outside. So 20 meters is probably not the greatest band to be using during the, the evening. I'll take the sucker's way out for sure on that one. So we're still transmitting. The light's on, so we seem to be all right. We'll see how it goes. Give it a second. I may, uh, I may power cycle it too. I may just do a, a reboot through the console first and then uh, try it again. Okay, so it's done. I'm going to go ahead and issue a restart. So, uh, by the way, for anybody that hasn't used Raspbian, the start menu and bar that you're familiar with on Windows, which is normally in the bottom, is on the top. The upper left-hand corner there's a little Raspberry logo. This is basically your start menu. If you go to Shutdown... I'm going to reboot. Pretty easy. Joe S. I did cheat and I pre-wound all the toroids. And I'm certainly not a kit builder at all. Don't, don't confuse that. I'm not a kit builder. I just, uh, I like to solder and I like to dabble. And I don't mind failing, even in front of uh, 220 of my closest friends. <laughs> I just don't care. <laughs> so if I fail, I fail. But, hey, I'm having fun doing it. So, all right, we're back. This is the SDR Play uh, image that I'm using, by the way. I, I happen to think it's pretty cool with the tools that are loaded. So if you do end up getting a uh, SDR Play, um, I'm just going to double check I'm doing this right. So let me go back to the GitHub. Oh, well, no, it's still starting. So what the hell, we'll copy it exactly. Oh, okay, it doesn't like that. Did I do it wrong? No, sudo whisper n9nn.
Oh, somebody knows me. Or knows something about me. Well. I'm kind of like touching it. I shouldn't probably touch it. When he's doing what he's doing. <laughs> I am in the right directory. Oh, um, you know what? Ooh, where's the jumper go? Do I need to use that jumper? It didn't mention it. No. No, I... Do you have to use that jumper? Why do they provide you the jumper if you don't need the jumper? Install the jumper on the three pin header in the GPIO for this complete. Okay, well, there you go. There's your problem. Let's go ahead and stop this guy. Uh, control C to pull that out. Um, I'm going to pull the GBIO out. If you read the instructions, it will work. Okay. Okay, GBIO4. Contact. I like to feel that this kit is that easy to install that I didn't screw this up. <laughs> Oh no, forget your life. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Uh. Wait. Is it transmitting? I can hear it. I can hear static. That noise. I bet when the screen changes, when this changes to done, that noise is going to go away. Doesn't sound like data. Oh, wait. Yep, there's something there. All right. Okay, so let me show you. It's in there. In here, right there. You can't see it, really. There's just a... Can you see it? I don't think you can. But there's a little blip right there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Inbred Redneck Podcast. Yeah, man. That's just my garage door. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Okay, we're still transmitting, so... I'm going to make it work. When this stops, if we hear the noise go away, we're on upper sideband. When that says done, oh, that one. <laughs> Which way am I going? That, when it says done, and it's gone. I think we got it. I think we got it. I think we got it. I mean, who knows if anybody's listening, though? That's the problem. Oh! Yes! Yes! All right, so from California, just now, picked up by K9AN in who knows where. Uh, Indiana? Illinois! On, so... I'm, I'm on Whisper right now. Okay, guys, this is putting out less than a watt of power. Less than a watt of power on 20 meters. It's nighttime. Bad time for the bands. Out of this bad boy right now. Great success. Very good. That's fantastic. <laughs> 
That is fantastic. All right, so that's a, there's a lesson. Read your manual, kids. Read your manuals. That feels good. There, so there's a, there's a lot of things, uh, there's a lot of things that like you complete something and you're like, yeah, yeah, I did that. Yeah, I did that. Building a kit's like that. So I highly recommend building a kit. This is $20, um, $20 kit. Works through the Raspberry Pi. You know what? I'm feeling so good about it. Let's throw out another one. And I, I, have, I don't have this set up to just auto beacon. I will probably do that tomorrow. Um, I'll probably do that tomorrow when I'm at the beach. Mike, WVX0MIK says, sorry, I missed the beginning. What is the purpose of this? Okay, so what the purpose is of this? The Raspberry Pi running a com it's a basically a computer with a hat on it that allows you to transmit on 20 meters. That is connected to an N-fed antenna that I have with like 100 feet of wire lying out in the backyard. That's transmitting for three minutes about a tone with data in it. And that data is giving information like my call sign, my location, and some other stuff. I don't really know what's in all the packets or, or the data frames of Whisper. There are people all around the world, really, that are running software connected to radios that can receive incoming data from Whisper. And what those people then do is when they receive some transmission on Whisper from a call sign at a given location, they upload it to the internet, and then you can see it mapped like this here. K9AN picked me up. Um, less than 10 minutes ago or the the i am only sent one packet he got me let's see if anybody else got me i'll update it real quick sometimes it'll be like one and then a couple more will come in it's kind of a slow mode you gotta have a lot of patience with whisper and so how people use this is they'll leave their transmitter running um i shouldn't have said what i said earlier of course i am always in close proximity of my radio station it never operates without me there uh, people will let it operate in close proximity or their remote operator for it and they'll let it transmit for a long period of time on a given band for example and they'll see how throughout the day how propagation changes okay yeah so only one only one list but hey i'll take it k9an you're you're the man um gonna send that guy a sticker in fact i gotta write that down <laughs> k9an is gonna be like who is this guy i don't want to imply that you're an old person i don't know why i use that accent i didn't have to do that um but yeah so let's go back to okay so we finished and it finished at 1351 so we'll give it a we'll give it a couple of seconds and then we'll refresh um so i believe beacons are auto transmit so long you have the capability to deactivate the beacon I believe that's the case, but I could be wrong. And if that's the case, hey, that's fine too. I'll take it. Excellent. Well, hot diggity. That is, uh, see if I list it again. No, same guy. So 20 meters is probably, I, I, I probably, this is probably pretty lucky that I made it this far on 20 meters at night like this. Um, I'll take it though. You know what? I'll take it. <laughs> Excellent. Wow. I am. I'm just kind of sitting here quietly happy with myself. Nicely done. And I'm, and, and I'm happy with myself with what is really just a, a $20 kit and your $20 or $30, how much you paid for your raspberry Pi. Um, this will take you maybe a couple hours and, and if you like stuff like that, you'll have a lot of fun doing it. I highly recommend this kit. I really do. This is, uh, this is awesome. Yeah, I would totally recommend this. So yeah, not affiliated with QRP guys, but I've built a lot of their stuff and this is a, this is a pretty good one. So I, uh, I'm, I'm, a... <laughs> yeah, I'm very happy with myself. I don't know why, like I've never seen whisper work, but maybe because I built the little module for it anyway. Cool. 
Oh, yeah, John Fuller says, enjoy your Project Glow. It's a little weird, but I'll take it. It's a little weird. All right. Um, for the... For the heck of it, um, I should have I should have did this a lot earlier. I'll activate the the call in. I don't know that anybody's gonna call in, but I do have a call in in case you got a couple of questions. And then we're gonna head over to the Discord. So we'll do this for five minutes or so. And if nobody calls, that's all right because I waited too long anyway. Yeah, fifty five dollars for the Pi Four though. The Pi Four's got some problems. Well, I, I'll let people smarter than me like uh, like uh, loyal Zach, as it were, and we call him loyal in the Discord. He probably has thoughts on the Raspberry Pi 4. Did my session expire? No, it's still there. Anyway. Cool. Well, the site might be slow to refresh right now, but it's not normally slow. Let's see. No, it's good. QRP, guys? It's easy. Fast. All right, well, I wait for somebody to call if they choose to call in. If not, no big deal. We'll do the Patreon thing real fast. This was the Patreon picks or the patrons pick. So I hope you guys liked it. There's usually a selection of close to 20 or so show ideas that I have that I keep updating throughout the months. And the patrons get to pick the first month, the first Friday of the month, they pick the topic. So, yeah. Absolutely. If you don't have a Pi, a Raspberry Pi, I would get a Pi 3 right now because the sale, the prices have come down a bit as the Pi 4 has come out. And I think the Pi 3 might be the better starting point. Uh, the Pi 4 has a USB, the newer USB connection. You know, is that USB-C? Anyway, or the Thunderbolt connection. So, oh, we got a caller. We'll take it real fast here. Hey, caller, you're on the air. What's, uh, what's your name? Almost there. Then they left. <laughs> anyway, thank you to Chris Ebert, Kerry Blackwell, Jason Brown, Jason Siebert, David Dancero, Danny Miller, Wesley Magyar, Barbara Shrook. Is it Shrook? Oh, Shrook. Sorry. I'm, I'm a little far from the screen right now. I'm on the other side of the, the whole desk. Franklin Lewis, Brad Snyder, Dennis Dunderdale, Garrett Larson, Jonathan Franson, AD6DM Dennis, The Wyoming Ham, Randall Hinsley, Dennis Mickelson, George Gaini, Andy, Kenny Miyamoto, Ron Thorson, Ken Hall, Corey Violetta, uh, Mr. Invalid Mode. option. Oh, okay, thank you. Devin B. Hedge, Mark Chase, Raymond Cracker, Geraldo Kelso, KE8HWD Rob, Thomas Strickland, Rick Van Horn, Lee Harrell, Corey Sheldon, Brad Nadal, Stephen Hunt, Ronald White, Brian Noskowitz. Thank you for the beer, brother. I appreciate that. That was awesome. And the Brew Crew, which I totally do recommend you go try out this Hamburg Juice Box. Um, juice Box Boy. This stuff's really good. Double Dry Double Hopped IPA. I don't know that I've had a dry double hopped. I've had double hopped. And I've had a double, but I don't know if it's been dry. But yeah. Hmm. All right. Well, that'll do it. I'm going to the Discord now. If you'd like to join us, please take Zach's link if you're in this chat. For those of you that are watching this after the fact, I'll sort out the description. So the link will be good in the description. So you can follow that and it'll 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 get you to where you're going, which is hopefully our Discord. And I'll see you over there. All right, guys. Been a lot of fun. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you soon. See ya.